Today I'd like to take our journey uh, in the Gospel of Matthew into chapter 11. Uh, and now what Jesus is teaching his apostles uh, now. Chapter 11, starting in verse 1, says, When Jesus finished giving these commands to his twelve disciples, he went away from that place to teach and to preach in their towns. Uh, so Jesus has given a lot of commands uh, in chapter 10. Uh, he's told them it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, they have to take up their cross. It's, it's going to be a hard mission. Uh, they're going to face rejection. Uh, they can't take much with them. Uh, it's been a, sort of a bracing chapter in some ways for the 12, but also for us today, uh, because we are the followers, we are the disciples of today, and so Jesus is telling us this is not going to be easy, uh, it's going to be a challenge, uh, and uh, we have to really kind of buckle up and get down to it. It's, uh, it's, going, to be, it's going to be hard. Uh, so he gives those commands, and then he goes away uh, to teach and to preach in their town. So Jesus is kind of showing them, uh, by example, uh, what is going to happen. Uh, as they are going to go about preaching and teaching in various towns and face questions and uh, face difficulties and uh, many hardships. And so Jesus is doing that. So Jesus is showing them the path forward. Well, he does that. There are some messengers from John the Baptist that come uh, and speak with him. And so in verse 2, when John heard in prison of the works of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to him. So John is now in prison. Uh, and John is kind of a living witness of what Jesus talked about in terms of rejection and hardships and, and suffering that you're going to face. John went out preaching and teaching. Uh, he was sharing the good news. He was getting people to repent, getting ready for the message of Jesus. And he winds up in prison. Uh, so if you're one of the 12, you're one of the followers of Jesus, you're saying, well, if that happened to John the Baptist, uh, I'm sure it could happen to Jesus, it could happen to us, it's something that we're going to have to deal with. Um, in Matthew 4, uh, verse 12, we have heard, uh, when we heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee, so Jesus uh, is, is really very smart and very practical uh, in terms of how to proclaim the gospel. You know, John has been arrested in the area of Judea, outside of Jerusalem, near the uh, Jordan River. So Jesus says, well, <laughs> if John has, has been arrested, this might be a, a good time for me to kind of get out of town here and uh, get into Galilee in the north and, and not be under as much uh, kind of people who are going to uh, look me over and check me out, and uh, it might be better to uh, kind of be a little bit more prudent and go where I'm not going to be seen as much by the authorities that would be surrounding the temple area and the, and the official religious practices of the Jewish people. Um, in terms of prison, according to Josephus in his book, The Antiquities, uh, chapter 18, uh, the prison was in the palace fortress of Machaerus. Uh, it was built by Herod the Great on the desolate heights of Moab near the eastern central shore of the Dead Sea. So a little bit to the east of that. Uh, and so this fortress was kind of an imposing fortress. Uh, it was a sign of the power uh, of Herod the Great who was a tremendous builder, uh, helped in terms of the finishing of the temple. Uh, and of course, it was his sons who were alive and, and ruling in the time of Jesus. Uh, and so uh, John the Baptist gives his disciples, he sends them to Jesus, and he gives them a question. And the question is, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Uh, and when you first hear this question, you're like, well, wait a minute, you know, John the Baptist is his cousin. Uh, he certainly would be aware of 
Jesus and, and what his mission was going to be and what Jesus was all about, or see, maybe he wasn't that aware. It was his cousin, the relationship. Uh, John came to be uh, the baptizer, and, and when Jesus came to be baptized him, uh, and, he, and he realized that Jesus was special, but maybe there's somebody else, is what you're thinking with this question. Uh, and part of it could be that the mission of Jesus seems to be quite different than the mission of John the Baptist when you compare them. Uh, the mission of John the Baptist was kind of a fiery judgment, you know, repent, and uh, he was really uh, kind of very uh, strong in terms of his uh, proclamation. And the approach of Jesus is kind of different. So maybe when John heard this, he's like, well, let me check this out. Let me be sure that Jesus is the one. Uh, or it could be, of course, the other obvious conclusion is maybe some of the disciples of John the Baptist came to him and said, well, you know, Jesus is taking a very different approach than you're taking. Uh, what's up with this? If he's the one who is to come, shouldn't he have the same message that you have and proclaim it in the same way? And I think it's like anything. We can get attached to a certain teacher, uh, a certain preacher, a certain leader, uh, a certain uh, head of a congregation, even a certain political leader, community leader. Uh, and we can gravitate to their style, and we can even form a personal relationship with them and get to like them and even love them. And when they... Uh, you know, change or, or move to a different area, it can be hard for us uh, emotionally because we're attached to the former leader. So maybe in a certain sense, these followers of John the Baptist, maybe they were attached to him and found it difficult to move on to Jesus. And maybe John imposing that question through his uh, disciples, his own disciples, maybe that was his intention to get them to see that Jesus truly is the one particularly now with John being in prison and John not knowing, when am I going to get out of prison? Am I ever going to get out of prison? Uh, you know, he faced a difficult situation there uh, because he had pointed out the sin uh, of, of Herod. So Jesus says to them in reply in verse 4, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind... In verse 5, the blind regain their sight, uh, the lame walk, uh, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. So Jesus is quite explicit in telling them what he's about. Uh, he's not shy at all, he's not holding anything back. He lays out his program. He lays out what he's been doing really, in terms of spreading the good news. And when you look at each one of these, it certainly tells a lot about Jesus. So the blind regaining their sight, again, this healing ministry of Jesus. When that happens, this is something extraordinary. Blind people regaining their sight, I mean, this is enough to say to you, well, this person is doing something extraordinary. Then on top of that, the lame are walking. So these are people that couldn't walk at all, and now they're walking. I mean, this is remarkable. Then the lepers are cleansed. Lepers who had been, you know, away from the community, outside of the community, now are back with the community. They're cleansed. Remarkable. Uh, the deaf hear. People couldn't hear, and now they can hear. This is extraordinary stuff. On top of that, the dead are raised. I mean, the dead are raised. Who does that? Who has the power to do that? So Jesus gives a list of extraordinary things, all of which really have the same basic purpose, and that is to restore people to the community, to make sure that they are connected to their sisters and brothers 
in their towns, in their families, in their tribes, in their cities. This is what Jesus is about, bringing people into community through healing. And then finally, and then the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. So again, there are some who might have been physically poor with various illnesses, but then Jesus' primary mission, and primary emphasis, always to bring that message to the poor, those who are on the margins of society, those who are neglected. Jesus is not about going first to the powerful and convincing them. Uh, some people might take the approach, well, if I can convince the wealthy, then they can get the other people to fall in line. No, Jesus takes the opposite approach. Let me go to those who are neglected, those who don't have the economic means, those whose society looks down upon in many ways. Let me go to them and tell them that they are loved by God, that they're invited into the kingdom, that I want to share my life with them. So this is the program that Jesus lays out to the messengers of John the Baptist, the disciples who come. And it's very interesting to me because isn't this our program for today? Isn't this what we should be about uh, as we proclaim the gospel in our day and age?